I think we'll start at 7 o'clock. Um, I have people still arriving. I, I had to update Zoom today, which is slightly annoying. Maybe that's what's going on. But, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so, a couple of bits of news uh, from us this morning, and then we're going to be talking to Craig Martin uh, of Vietnam Holding. Um, and the bits of news that I picked out, I'm going to talk about Danny Strategic, and uh, Richard here is going to talk about UK commercial property and Picton. So, Downing Strategic Microcap first. Um, that is the chart of it since it launched in 2017. And as you can see, it's sort of only really going one way. Well, that's not, that's not entirely fair. There is a sort of post-COVID bounce, but then it sort of tails off again. Um, and the discount is about 15%, and the market cap is tiny. Uh, it never started as very big, but it wasn't supposed to be very big because of what it's investing in. But nevertheless, because of what's happened with the NFP and the share price, uh, that's twisted for already is probably a bit too small. Um, so it raised 54.5 million quid net when um, it first kicked off. And as I say, it needed to be small to be able to do what it was doing. And it was investing in quite a focused portfolio of micro cap companies. So that's things with a market cap under 150 million pounds. And it had sort of lofty ambitions to generate a compound return of 15% per annum over the long term. And obviously, it's got nowhere near that. Um, it's a sort of structure that's slightly akin to North Atlantic Smaller, TGFT Capital, Odyssey, and that sort of thing. So, so taking stakes in things that um, it feels are undervalued and then trying to unlock the, find a catalyst to unlock that value. Um, and so using a private equity time of research approach to um, decide what they want to invest in. So processing things like cash flow and assets and that sort of thing. <clears throat> um, and then, as it says there, proactive engagement, which is obviously a, a particular box, so it's something that probably is needed to maximise shareholder value. So I think when it launched, I thought, well, this is a good idea. Um, it probably will work. Um, given that, you know, there's always a risk of buybacks and discounts. So sort of discounts and things. They needed to have a, some kind of discount economics into them. And at the start, they said they do that through a combination of buybacks and a redemption facility. And the, the first redemption facility was going to be offered in 2020. So, so three years down the line after they launched. And then every second year thereafter. But of course, fast forward to 2020 and we had COVID. And the, the chairman basically said, we just don't think this is a good idea. Um, and 2021, he said the same thing. And 2022, finally, they said, well, look, we're going to have to do an additional um, opportunity. We're going to do it, though, in May 2024. Um, now, as to why this hasn't worked, it's it's hard to say. There were a couple of things that went wrong quite early days. Um, one thing got liquidated because of a change in government policy. Uh, another one turned out to be significantly worse under the hood um, once they got um, involved and found had a board seat. So that was like an early loss. It's, you do get this kind of J curve thing. So um, the element of that, that may be that most um, understandable. But I think the main problem that they've had is the derating of the market. So if you look at the median forward price earnings ratios um, here when they, in the prospectus when they launched, and today, the whole numis more cap plus a X investment companies index is on eight point eight times. Um, there's a, been a massive derating of the UK market. Um, they put a couple of sense. I really struggled to find meaningfully useful statistics. That's kind of what I'm doing all morning is looking for these. But this, they, they quote this. So the number of UK listed companies is half. We know about this deactualization thing that's been going on. Um, there haven't been any new issues recently. And 2022 is particularly bad, but 2023 hasn't exactly perked up. Um, and the UK market has generally been shrinking. And we know about things like ARM that were chosen to launch in the States um, rather than here. And partly it's because we just aren't allocating money to UK equities as a nation and pension funds in particular. Um, the allocation to UK companies is at the lowest level in history. Um, and that's what all the kind of mansion house reforms are about. Um, that um, Jeremy Hunt's hoping to to do something about in the autumn awesome statement. We hope we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. It might come too late for this, I think. Um, so what they're planning to do is a fifty percent return of capital. Um, 
Yeah, sorry, sorry. The work plan says 50% of the time calculated in 2024, but instead they're going to do a managed wind down. So to implement that, they're going to have to have child approval. So there'll be a circular published in the next uh, few weeks. And because they've got a couple of investments that are relatively mature, so things that they've actually got bids for, um, they're pretty confident that they can do a 20% return of NAV within Q1 um, quite early on. Um, and then it'll just be a question of, of when the money flows back to the portfolio size and when they've got sufficient money to do a distribution, they, they, will, they will do it. Um, the manager's reasonably optimistic about this um, and does think there's still significant upside. Um, but they're, they're talking about upside to the current market cap. So um, there's closing the discount and then a bit of an upside from there. So it's not enormous. Um, I think it'd be slightly brave to pile in uh, and, and hope of trying to make money out of this, but um, uh, it might be doable. So that's enough from me. Uh, let's talk to Richard. <coughs> yeah, cheers. So um, big news in the, the property world this week is the announcement on Wednesday that um, Picton Property and UK Commercial Property REIT were in talks to merge. Um, strangely, um, UK Commercial Property came out with the announcement first thing in the morning, but it transpires it's actually Picton that have um, approached UK commercial looking um, to, to make the deal happen. So um, all share merger on a on a nav by nav basis, um, and it's 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 Picton that's driving this, and so it'll be internally managed by Picton, which is led by um, Michael Morris. Um, I mean, both companies are very well run, good good sets of managers, um, and got really complementary um, portfolios, which which probably make this work. Um, so they, um, they picked and have to declare by the 6th of December whether they're, they're going to make a firm intention to make an offer. So um, we'll, we'll see if that happens. We'll look on the next slide, James. Thanks. Yeah. So um, both are trading on, well, UK commercial shares picked up a little bit after the news. Um, Picton's went down a little bit, actually. But um, both are trading on, have been trading on around 30% discount um, for for a little while. UK Commercial is the bigger of the two, um, portfolio of about 1.3 billion, and Ness Asset is of just over 1 billion, whereas um, Picton slightly smaller. Uh, combined, there'd be a sort of nab of around 1.6 billion and a portfolio worth about 2 billion. So, um, pretty decent size. Um, I've been saying for a while that there's quite a lot of small REITs in this sector all doing a similar thing. So, why not? merge a couple of them and, and create a much bigger one. And this is what will hopefully happen here. So combined portfolio, like I said, just over 2 billion at the moment um, with a, a big focus on industrial. Both both companies have got over 50% of their assets in industrial, which has taken a bit of a pounding on values recently because it's coming off the lowest um, yields, but um, it's still the the, the sector, the commercial property sector that, that has got the best rental growth going forward. Um, and then chucking their bill to rent as well. But those two are the sort of big big sectors. Um, so that would be the combined portfolio weightings. So good good on, on industrial, about 20% on offices, but it's, it's small enough. Um, here's UK commercials. Um, chart over the last five years as you see back end of last year it, it was doing well and then obviously the interest rates skyrocketed property values came down you can see the impact there but it's been um, trading on a on a wide discount for a long time now um so it it it, it has had its problems and, and maybe knocking these two together will, will solve them unfortunately Picton's not in the AIC peer group, um, so comparable data is not not really there for us. So, but um, you can see in the UK commercial um, peer group, um, UK commercial property group down there at the bottom, um, not not good over one year. Um, only regional REIT is is worse, and that's um, solely focused on offices. 
Um, but to be fair, not everyone there has reported their end of September nav, so they might move. But um, yeah, it's not great over longer term periods either. Um, so the, um, in my view, it's a, it's a good idea, like I was saying, um, getting bigger um, REITs together, making sort of large, less but larger REITs. It makes sense to me. There's a lot of small, smaller ones knocking around, all, all doing similar stuff. Um, this makes sense. Um, we'll see what happens. But um, like I said, that stuff, we're going to find out more sort of early December whether they're going to progress with this. Great. Thanks very much, Richard. Uh, I'd appreciated the pictures on the wider disc count than the other one. But actually, what you might be already getting is this kind of merger arbitrage thing, the same thing we're seeing with RTW and Arix, which we talked about last week. Mm. Um, you have to wait and see. Good. 